La batting third in that Dalbert Pujols. Last night, a three-run shot, another game winner for the best hitter of this generation, Major League's home run leader, Albert Pujols. Batting fourth, trying to provide some protection is Juan Encarnacion. He lives right here in the Florida area, Miami area, starting to show some life with his bat, and he's impressed both of us with his defensive ability. Nine games off for Scott Rowland, but this is his third consecutive start. He thought yesterday he was sore until he woke up this morning and he found a new definition of soreness. But he'll play tonight and be ready for another Cardinal victory. It's Jim Edmonds, and he is batting six for the Cardinals. Second on the team with his 20 RBIs. He's got five game winners. Last year he had 14. Behind Edmonds, so Taguchi, he's in left tonight. He's starting to swing a hot bat. He's swinging the strikes right now, putting the ball in play. His last time out, he got a big two-run double, but it wasn't enough. Yadier Molina has struggled this season, Al. He struggled, but there's room, reason to believe that he's going to break out. He still does all the things a catcher to really help his pitching staff. He's still the best we have. Mark Mulder is on the mound and batting ninth for St. Louis. Well, Mark Mulder's hit the ball well, looking to win his 100th ball game here tonight. This is his third time at that quest. So that lineup will face one of the game's top left-handers, and this is our fourth-key matchup, Dontrell Willis, and this is what he has done against the Cardinals in his career. Last year, Al, a 22-game winner. 22-game winner is right, and he can be a handful. He's never faced the Cardinals here in South Florida. He's making his 100th start of the season. So Don, Dontrell Willis will get the start tonight for the Florida Marlins against the St. Louis Cardinals at Dolphin Stadium. Cardinals and Marlins coming up next on FXN Midwest. Advanced Auto Parts starter for the Marlins is Dontrell Willis, a record this season of 1-2, and two, a 4.38 ERA, and he is the ace of the staff with the Florida Marlins. Off to a little bit of a slow start, but last year he showed how good he could be, winning 22 games and had the third best ERA in the major leagues. Cardinal lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Eckstein, Luna, and Pujols in the first. Of course, Albert with another home run last night. Then Incarnacion, the cleanup man, Roland, Edmonds, Taguchi, Molina, and Mulder. We see what Pujols has done this season. He leads the major leagues in home runs with 16. He's got 30 walks in 29 games with those 16 homers. And the first pitch to David Eckstein. He's taken for a ball low and in. The Cardinals shortstop here in the top spot of this lineup with a 375 on base percentage and he backs away from ball two and it's quickly two and nothing a little bit of the family reunion here in Miami for David his mom dad sister nephews nieces 13 family members here had a bar birthday party for one of his sister's uh, kids yesterday and another one today David out of Sanford Florida and he picks up a leadoff base hit well, it's so important now to get anybody on in front of Albert Pujols and hitting in front of Pujols tonight. It's Hector Luna. He'll dig in. The defense behind Willis is brought to you by Auto Tire. Willingham, Abercrombie, Borchard in the outfield. Cabrera, Ramirez, Ugla, Jacobs on the infield. And it's Miguel Olivo behind the plate tonight. Around the Horn is brought to you by Auto Tire. Now it's Hector Luna. Luna's hitting 327 with two home runs and seven driven in. And he takes a ball outside. The funky motion of Dontrell Willis. They say if he gets a little rushed or a little quick, he'll be all over the place. But as long as he takes his time out in this motion, they say he gets to the right spot where he needs to deliver the baseball. Yeah, he started a game last year against the Cardinals, and he was in one of those uh, funky times where he couldn't throw strikes and just really, you know, just really, really struggled throwing strikes. But I talked to a couple of guys about how difficult it is to pick up his ball and they said it's not that bad. Which well, really is surprising with all yeah. the movement. Kind of hides the ball on the way to the plate. You know, when he came to the big leagues and had great success, I said, oh, it's because he's an old-fashioned herky-jerky that you just hide the ball and you don't see it until he's already released it and he throws hard enough where it gets upon you and you have very little reaction time. Here's a one-two pitch. And Luna spoils the uh, two-strike pitch. The way that he finishes his delivery, do you think about bunting against Dontrell Willis? It's got to be tough with the way that he finishes with the stiff leg to field his position as well as he has, but he's done the job. All right, he's done the job, and if you bunt here, 
say they uh, throw out Luna, then you created that first base opening so they can walk pool. So uh, I think you just try and take the ball up the middle. Off the foot oh. of uh, Luna in a foul ball. The one thing, when you have a guy like Dontrell, and he can get a lot of ground balls, a lot of times for a left-hander, that breaking ball, you get a lot of ground balls to the left side of the infield. And they've already, between Cabrera and Ramirez, have committed 13 errors, half of their 26 team errors. Talk about the Marlins being such a young team for Joe Girardi. Three years in the ball game last night. This is one of the Cardinals' young players at the age of 26. Double play ball, possibly four six three. Got a double play. So now that uh, leadoff base hit is a race with the double play. And it brings in Albert Pujols. Now we talked about that Dontrell can get ground balls. And well hit. And has to be hit hard enough to turn two, especially with Luna run. The Majors' fastest player ever to get to 14 home runs. And 15 home runs. He tied Cy Williams as the fastest to 16. He did it back in 1923. You know, I looked up Cy Williams. He ended up with 42 home runs to lead the league that year. You know, that's kind of an area because, you know, a lot of times back then they didn't get that many home runs. But Cy Williams got off to the quick start and sustained him through the season. Albert is deep in the box. And here comes a 1 1 pitch as they're going to try to go inside. And Pujols fouls it straight back. Albert with an opposite field home run and there's about four or five scouts that are watching both these teams and I visited with one of them. He said his swing is the best in baseball right now. He said he couldn't believe that he took that pitch out of the ballpark with such a short compact swing. All right. Joe Girardi was talking a little bit about Albert and said you used to be able to get inside on him. Well, you see Jim Fergosi works for the Atlanta Braves. But he used to get inside on him. He said, right now, you can't pitch him inside because he can hit that one out of the ballpark now, too. So you just have to change speed. You have to go in and out, up and down. The best way is to go in off the plate, no strikes, and then try to get him off, off speed away. The 3-2 pitch, and Pujols grounds it to short. Ramirez is there. He'll take his time. A low throw, and it's picked by Jacobs. Cardinals pick up a hit. That's arranged on the double play. Pool is retired. Mulder goes to work next. Barney and the Marlins have a record of 8-19 on this season. After losing last night to the Cardinals, his lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Ramirez, Ugla, Cabrera, Willingham, Borchard, Olivo, Jacobs, Abercrombie, and Willis. See Hanley Ramirez and what he's done in the run score department, one of the top rookies in the game of baseball. Numbers for Mark Mulder are brought to you by Rico. He has a record of 2-1, and one, opponents hitting 278 against him. And in visiting with Barry Weinberg prior to the game, the Cardinals trainer says his back feels about as good as it has in the last 7 to 10 days. So that's good news. Little chopper at left side. It is a foul ball. I saw the third base umpire down on a knee waiting to make that call, but the ball never got past the bag, so it's the home plate umpire ruled it foul. And strike one on Hanley Ramirez. Same thing we talked about with Willis. You got a left-hander that has a big breaking ball, so a lot of ground balls go to the left side of the infield. No one has won more games than Mark Mulder's 90 wins from 2001 to the present, the most in the majors, and a 600 career winning percentage. Open stance by Ramirez, and that is ripped off the glove of Scott Rowland. He was playing a couple of steps in. Ramirez, as we saw him last night, can fly. It's bobbled out and left, and now he can just trot into second base. Hot shot that could not be handled by Scott Rowland, the six-time Gold Glove Award winner. And our auto tire defense, Taguchi, Edmonds, Encarnacion in the outfield. Rowland, we just saw him. Eckstein on the left side of the infield. Luna and Pujols on the right side, and Molina is behind the plate. Uh, hard smash. You see rolling in, tries to backhand it, gets underneath him, and then here Taguchi tries to barehand it and misses it. With the speed of Ramirez, he's on. It's a hit and an error. And a fastball. 
The outside corner to Dan Ugla. Hitting 274 with four home runs and 14 RBIs. Saw that speed on the triple by Ramirez late in the ballgame last night, ninth inning. Off of Jeff Supon. He's out at second base, so a base hit more than likely would score him. The one pitch by Mulder. Hit out to center field. Edmonds will make the catch. Looked like he had to shade himself a little bit. He's got the glasses down. But a ball hit right at him. That's the toughest for a center fielder or an outfielder. Yeah, I agree with you. And he kind of looking at Encarnacion as he looked like he really squatted down Jim Edmonds, the center fielder, to try and find that ball underneath the sun. Or And uh, now you see he's still shielding out there. So Mulder's got the first out. And now it's Miguel Cabrera. Josh Willingham on deck. Cabrera is hitting 333. Mulder puts one in the dirt. It'd be interesting to see the velocity tonight of Mark Mulder, who did not throw hard in that start against Cincinnati. Uh, I saw a replay of a couple pitches there, and it almost looked like even on the breaking ball, it was affecting him just in his follow through. Couldn't really bend over and pull down on the pitch. So a little treatment, just the reassurance that there's nothing. You know, major wrong. 1 0 pitch. It's one ball, one strike. One of the best young players in all of baseball right here in Cabrera. Mold. TV does not do it justice. She's standing next to the guy, and I was near the batting cage at batting practice prior to the game. He is huge. Yeah, you, you really can't appreciate his size. Because he doesn't look that big when you look at him from our vantage point here. But when you get up uh, next to him, you know, he is just, uh, he's well put together. And he's got a frame that looks like he can still grow. Here comes a 1-1 pitch by Mulder. Tied him up just a bit. A swing and a miss. And it's 1-2. and two. Miguel Cabrera's seven for his last 15 with six RBIs at five RBIs on Thursday at Washington and that's one shy of his uh, career high played for Venezuela in the World Baseball Classic two time all star and finished fifth in the MVP balloting a year ago uh, he's had 66 home runs 233 home run seasons back to back 200 plus RBI seasons. And he's still about 22 years old. And the one two pitch outside two and two. Mark Mulder in his last start against Cincinnati. Five innings, eight hits, six runs, and all of the six were earned. Count even, two balls, two strikes. You see where Luna is playing, just right shadowing Ramirez at second base. He shoots it foul and out of play. That's the only way the Cardinals would have any shot on a base hit of throwing out Ramirez is by Luna standing right there worrying about a pickoff and not allowing him to get a good jump. to talk to Mulder, see Dontrell. Picked up yesterday the Warren Spahn Trophy, representing the best left-handed pitcher in baseball a year ago. Not much of a crowd again here tonight, and a good portion of this crowd, Cardinal fans, they felt the crowd last night was one of the best that they had had all season as far as the fans being into it. And there was only a crowd of 13,266. And of course they go out and make three errors and looked a little sloppy in that seven run Cardinal fifth inning. And you lose some of your crowd and your support. They also lost a uh, with a Senate session ended last night and they didn't they failed to approve that $60 million uh, Marlins package. 
trying to get their new stadium. The 3-2 pitch, a curveball, and pulled foul. Saw where Molina is really just placing his target on the ground. And a curveball that was pulled down by Mulder, and Cabrera just pulled it foul. Three balls, two strikes on Miguel Cabrera. Runner at second, Hanley Ramirez. No score, and we're just underway in the first. He walked him. Mentioned before the start against the Marlins. Previous for Mark Holder in his career was with the Oakland A's. It was at this ballpark, and he allowed eight runs at three and two-thirds in that game. And the A's would lose it 13-2. Trying to pick up victory number 100 tonight in his career. First and second for Josh Willingham. Their leader in RBIs. But the double play is now in order. Had a four-game hitting streak. Snap last night. That pitch is in there for a strike. Played in just 16 games with the Marlins a year ago. And 66 games with their AAA affiliate, Albuquerque. And he hit 324 with 19 homers. They feel he has the best power in their organization. Back to Mulder and a chance at a double play. Luna on to first, low throw, and Albert picks it. Great pick by Albert Pujols over at first. And the double play started by Mark Mulder. Cardinal Baseball on FSM Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. By Auto Tire, the tire pros. For the lowest bottom line price, you ought to go to Auto Tire. By Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. And by Southwest Airlines with more flights to more places than ever before. Southwest is taking low fares farther. Visit Southwest.com. Juan Encarnacion takes the ball to start things off in the second inning. No score. Willis against Mulder tonight. Right back at his former teammate, Dontrell Willis. And there's one away. Dontrell pitches with that flare out there, doesn't he? Yeah. Not many of the Cardinals have had much success against Dontrell. Scott Rowland has had the highest average, but only, you know, one hit, a double, a two-run double, and three at-bats against Dontrell. The best hitter we got is, is Gary Bennett, three for ten. Albert, two for eight. Edmonds, one for seven, one for six. Incarnacion, oh for four. Don't look down. Don't do it. You wouldn't believe how, how I just uh, protected you. Look at that thing. I just killed on the floor. It's, it's getting ready to bite you. I'm going to tell Tony. Please don't do that. You're in trouble. I am in trouble. That fly is huge. What is that thing? It's dragonfly. They're very good for the environment. Who's raising the bar is uh, brought to you by Singular. Who is the most dominating lefty in baseball? Mulder, Willis, Johnson, Burley, or Steve Klein? Now, is it the first four, their, their arms, and the fifth, his uh, hat? But have you seen the uh, the body that Steve Klein has put together for this season? It's a lot sleeker, isn't it? He's uh, dropped 35, 40 pounds. Yeah. He was on his wrestling program during the offseason. Well, he did that one year, and his first year with the Cardinals, he did that and put on a suit that was just hanging on him, shirt hanging on him. He said, don't worry, I'll get back to my bad eating habits, and I'll gain 40 pounds again. And he certainly did that, he and then some. And then some with the Cardinals, but... He's a good guy. We wish him the best. Now with San Francisco, along with Matt Morris and Mike Matheny. San Francisco is at Philadelphia, and those fans were unkind to old Barry Bonds last night. They lived up to their reputation. Count of one and two on Edmonds. Hitting 220 with four home runs and 20 driven in this year. 89 degrees are game time temperature here in Florida. Edmonds with the base hit opposite way. Scott rolling to second. 
Scott Rowland is going to be held up at third. It's a double for Jim Edmonds. If the Cardinals would have sent Scott Rowland, he would have scored as the relay from Willingham to Hanley Ramirez was offline just a bit. Good piece of hitting here by Edmonds to go the opposite way. Well, Jim was one of the guys that said that he really sees the ball pretty well off of Dontrell going with that pitch out of way, slicing it into the left field corner. And but with one out, Okendo did the right thing. He saw the cutoff coming into the shortstop and uh, didn't realize it was a little off offline and the shortstop fell down and made a pretty athletic play just to stop it. Sure was. Here's So Taguchi with runners at second and third and one out. So is jammed and he fouls it back. Cardinals had a seven run fifth last night and that was the difference in the game. Trying to jump out early here against Dontrell Willis. That's ball. And it's one and one on So Taguchi. Had a two run double in the second inning Thursday night at Houston. That was with the bases loaded. Three for 14 with runners in scoring position, but much better now because he's not chasing pitches out of the strike zone. And Taguchi is jammed again and he fights it off, fouls it back in the hole now with a count of one ball and two strikes. He has made 17 starts prior to this start this evening and he's hitting 283 when Tony gives him the nod. One and two the count. Taguchi is swinging a miss and it's up to Yadier Molina. Two down. First strikeout on the night for Dontrell. Set up inside but he just overpowers him with a fast fastball up over the middle of the plate kind of pulled his head off. Here's my star of the game. I'm sure Yadier needs it. He needs some people in his corner. They're going to intentionally pass him and then get to Mulder with first base open. Such respect. Yadier's working out of his funk. He's going to be okay. And even when he was struggling, he was st still doing the catching well, throwing out runners taking charge of pitchers but you can understand why they're going to with two outs walk the eighth place hitter and bring up the pitcher. So the bases will be loaded for Mark Mulder. Maybe it was it was a good omen. Joe Girardi didn't see our open but when we were going around the the Cardinal lineup, the first thing we showed you about Mulder was him swinging the bat. And a home run. And a home run swing. And he has three RBIs with that and a home run on three hits. First pitch to him is a strike at 92 miles an hour. For left-handed batters, this guy has got to be tough to pick the ball up and just tough to face. The way he slings it in there. Seems like the ball is right on you. Um, I, I thought that's why it was interesting when I said to Edmonds about uh, tough to pick it up, and he and Eckstein both said it's not that bad. And the ball gets away. Here comes Scott Rowland, and he scores the first run of the night. On a pass ball, too. One to nothing, Cardinals. How about that with the pitcher up? A pass ball and Roland scores. Well, that's a problem. Growing pains for these young Marlin ball club that they make a lot of little mistakes. Sometimes they just, you know, they're very talented. There's some good talent on this on this ball field from the, wearing the black uniform. But in that situation, it's the concentration, it's the anticipation that they're a little bit behind playing at this level. Oliva just shaking his head. Terrible mistake. Mulder strikes out. Willis should have been out of it with no damage. Instead, the Cardinals pick up the run, and Mark Mulder says thank you. He goes back to work. Bottom of the second coming up.
Tonight's telecast from FSN Midwest is also available in HD on Charter Communications Channel 792 in the St. Louis area. High definition. A lot of Cardinal fans here. Including Chad Watson. Wants to say hi to family and friends back home. And the first pitch is a strike. Yeah, the Marlins have a batting practice pitcher, Tim Smith. He wants to send his love and prayers to his mom, Ruth Hope, who watches all of our Cardinal games in Decatur, Illinois. Dan, uh, Dave Van Horn, the radio voice of the Marlins, asked me if I'd deliver that. Dave was with the inception of the, Mar of, uh, the Marlins, or excuse me, in Montreal, and lives in the Jupiter area, and so it was natural when you know, they were having their problems in Montreal. They came over here. It's been the voice of uh, of the Marlins the last few years. Good guy. And he said, I think he said Tim Smith was a school teacher here, too. Two balls, two strikes on Joe Borchard. Just picked up by the Marlins. A check swing in the dirt. Olivo on deck, and then Mike Jacobs. Cardinals lead it thanks to a pass ball by the score of one to nothing. Orchard, young player, former number one draft pick out of Stanford University by the White Sox. And a rare distinction, quarterback for a Rose Bowl team and playing in the College World Series along with John Gall. And he looks at ball four. The second walk handed out by Mulder tonight. Cardinals have just introduced a new in-game picnic area. Homer's land Landing, located just behind the right field bleachers. Number to call for ticket information, 345-9500, press 1. Unlimited food and soda, Budweiser and Bud Light out there. Homer's yeah. Landing. Another day when Joe Strom from the ticket office called us and said there are still tickets available for those weekday series next week. Chance at another double play. Roland, Luna, and the second. No, Pujols dropped it. Would have been the second double play that the Cardinals turn tonight. Albert has been so good. Scotty feeds Luna. Got Rocher coming down on him. The throw sails to Albert's side, and then he just drops it. Mulder has induced the most ground ball double plays in the National League this year with 10 should have been 11 and last year he tied for that distinction with 32. Runner at first one out now Jacobs. First baseman hitting 185 for the Marlins. He thinks he kind of found a mechanical flaw with his batting stance says he taps his front foot which would be his right leg and that's what he uses as a timing mechanism the Mets as he was with the uh, New York organization a year ago actually set him down for a while as he was in a funk and just let him watch he said the Marlins have done the same thing and that kind of gave him time to reflect and he feels that that mechanism that you're talking about Al is a little off kilter and it kind of gets him off uh, a little off balance but Runner is going, and the pitch is taken for a strike and thrown out a second, and in there safely is Olivo. That's a catcher running there, but that base was stolen off of Mulder. Molina really had no shot, and I think Mulder just forgot about the base runner. Molina can make it close, but he had no chance with the big lead. And an 0-2 pitch from Mulder is on its way. Grounded to first, taken there by Pujols. Runner advances to third, and it brings in Reggie Abercrombie. Remember last night, it was Abercrombie, the guy that uh, our cameras picked up, that was peeking in as Gary Bennett was relaying the signs to the pitcher. We saw him do that a couple of times. All right, you can get away with it like you did last year at A ball and double A. And up here, you're batting under 200. You're trying to do little things, but that's a good way to get hurt. Reggie Abercrombie. What we talk about is right before the pitch is being made, he will look down and try and check where the catcher is. 
Didn't do it that time. And he looks at a strike on the inside corner. Had a very good spring. Led their club with uh, RBI 17 and hit 358. Also mixed in four home runs. And apparently the, already this year he's hit the longest home run ever by a visiting player at Cincinnati. That's hard to believe with some of Pujols' blast. Or done. Or, oh, you're saying busy. opposing. Okay. Even Edmonds, too. Yeah. So a lot of raw talent. I mean, he's just an exceptional athlete. center fielder and he wears number 61. He wasn't a guard in football. He's a good quarterback. A swing and a miss and it's one and two. Mulder should be out of the inning. He induced a ground ball that should have been turned for the double play. Pujols couldn't hold on. Next man rounded out that would have been the third and final out instead he's a strike away from heading to the third two balls and two strikes A.J. Burnett was in the position that Mulder is this year of being a free agent a year ago and A.J. cashed in to say the least with Toronto and a lot of people around baseball think this is the next one to do so Mark Mulder the 2-2 pitch. A grounder hit left side and foul. What was it? A.J. Burnett had about you know, 10 games under 500 career mark. And then you get Mulder. Who has got the third best winning percentage in baseball. And has won 50 games the last couple years. And the other thing that separates Mulder is his health. A.J. Burnett and his history with sure. arm problems and surgeries. Every once in a while, a stiff back will plague Mark Mulder, but nothing serious. The 2-2. Mulder walked two in his last start against the Reds in five innings. Tonight, he has already walked two, and he's gone three and two with the uh, Amber Crombie. Mulder is set, a runner at third, two down. And the 3-2 pitch is pulled foul. That's why you take that lead in foul territory. Olivo's not worried about that. He's worried about the bruise that would have yeah. been put on his body somewhere. But Selig's signature would have been sitting there. Rounder hit to short. Eckstein is there. Over to Albert. And the Marlins strand their second runner of the night. Cardinals lead it one to nothing. And coming up, it's the top of the order. This day in baseball history is brought to you by Schnooks at the Polo Grounds. Red Sox rookie pitcher Babe Ruth collects his first career home run. May 6, 1915. And of course... Barry Bonds is going for history, trying to pass the babe this weekend. What was that contraption that that gentleman is wearing with his glasses? I've never seen something like that. Al, any thoughts? I think it's a visual aid for someone maybe uh, sight impaired. I don't know. Or it's a good movie. Kind of one ball and two strikes on David Eckstein. This one is hit out to right center field. Shallow. Taken by Borchard. And there's one away. Eckstein is one for two. And it brings in Hector Luna. Grounded into a double play. First time up. Got to wonder how frustrated a guy like Dontrell Willis will get as this season moves forward. He's played on a World Series championship team. Played on a very good team a year ago that's been dismantled. And then you have things like how the Cardinals scored in the second with a pass ball, but you wonder about run support. You wonder about plays being made behind him. All those things factor into the frustrating year that uh, might lie ahead. 
but you've said it time again. Those are things out of your control. Yeah, you don't worry about it. You just got to uh, go out there and pitch. You also possibility of he's going to be getting to that stage of making a lot of money. So he just pitch and win, do what you can as a pitcher. And your circumstances might change because of uh, payroll constraints here. One and two, the count on Hector Luna. And Luna picks up a base hit into left center field. Cardinals, a couple years ago, decided to lock up Albert Pujols with a $100 million contract. And Miguel Cabrera, who is on par with Pujols, I think it's fair to say that offensively, is making $400,000 this year. But could you imagine what Pujols would make in the open market after this year? Oh, scary. Unbelievable. And could be unbelievable what Cabrera could command. They are figuring around four, four and a half million next year. So that's why they say, and you're right, Al, that Willis is going to make more money and he would be out of the two most marketable players on this team. If they're going to make a trade, it would be Willis the first to go more so than Cabrera. Well, you and I have discussed that, you know, how long can they stay here? But it seems like Jeffrey Loria wants to stay as the baseball owner. If he can't get the stadium deal, he wants to take his ownership to another state or city. And Major League Baseball has said they want to stay here some way, somehow, but they've got to get a stadium. They can't stay here like this. And you almost have to have a retractable dome. Right. I mean, this ballpark for fans that don't know is in the middle of nowhere. The 2-1 pitch. Pujols looks at a strike. Rounded out to short his first time up. Uh, we're politely asking Jeff Nelson about the location. Al McCray looking on, studying. All you do is pat Albert on the back. I was about Go to get say, <laughs> what do you say if you're Hal McCray? I guess you do look for certain things, though, if sure. he's jumping and... Yeah, and that, that's about the only time you see Albert get out of whack. But the most important thing is you just encourage him. That's right. Way to go. Nicely done. And 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 you don't have to encourage him to work. No. You no, know he's going to do that. Here comes a 3-2 pitch with a runner at first and a check on that runner. That's Hector Luna. Albert sometimes is a hitting coach's dream because he goes, that's one guy I don't have to worry about. I can spend more time with other people. rips it foul. That's a good example of what you're talking about where before at times if he got in on the hands or really got inside on Albert sometimes he would strike out this t this year more times than not he'll pull it foul or he has the unbelievable ability to keep that ball fair down the left field line. And yet there have been many replays I've seen over the years where I see a, a pitch up and in and he gets on top of it and hits it out of the park. Albert hits it a mile high. It is deep. Should stay in the ballpark. Willingham over. Looking for it. He's got it. Waiting for it to come down. And there's two outs. Back to first is Hector Luna. Yeah, that's what I talked about when I said he stays on top of the ball. Hits the line drive. That one he got underneath it. And just popped it up. Yeah. Juan Encarnacion, 0 for 1 on the uh, night. Rounded back to the pitcher, Dontrell Willis, first time up. Juan is hitting 218, four home runs, nine driven in. Played over 300 career games at this ballpark. Former Marlin right fielder, part of their world championship team. He was signed at the age of 16, and at that time, Al, when people saw his physical skills, they thought five-tool player. And I guess that's a description that gets thrown around a little bit too easily, but you see his arm, you see his speed. He does have some power. He can hit for average. He just hasn't put it together in the major league so far. 
but he's put together solid years. Yeah, sometimes as a disservice, you know, there's many labels that get thrown around at players, and sometimes a player will be compared to another player. But one of the intangibles is the head, the heart, the intestinal fortitude, you know, the drive. Here's the 0 2. That's why I always love watching the NFL draft and they'll talk about the, the combine and what a guy did, bench press and shuttle run and the 40 yard dash. And really the same thing with baseball. When you go to a tryout, they look at your arm and they watch you run. They don't watch you hit. But if David Eckstein showed up at one of those things, he'd be laughed out of the uh, tryout. I mean, they tell him, sure, you there's small. no way you can compete. You're not big enough. They just don't look at guys as players in what sport they participate in. If a guy can play football, he can play football. Baseball, baseball. A one-two pitch to Juan Encarnacion. Hold foul. How many times do you, you know, do we make a fair, a favorable uh, statement about a player when, when he has played football and say, well, he's got that play, player mentality, that football mentality. That's going to help him as a baseball player because he, he's aggressive. Other guys you have to light fires on. Hold foul again. Pretty good battle here with Willis and Encarnacion. Going inside and low to one. At least I've noticed this. You might be doing him a favor. It's with right-handed pitching, middle to outer half, breaking balls. He seems to chase an awful lot. One two pitch as they elevate and he shatters his bat. I think he's glad he made contact because that ball would be would be pulling out of his chest. <laughs> Self defense that, that is getting in your kitchen. That was deep in the kitchen. Yes it was. He shattered that baby in about five different pieces. Kind of one ball and two strikes. The handle and a couple little splinters off that. And that's how a lefty that slings the ball like Willis can get in on right hand. Here's the one two. Grounded back to Willis. He'll toss over to first. Cardinal strand a runner. They've left three on the night. Bottom of the third coming up from South Florida. Looking for. One to nothing Cardinals as we move to the bottom of the third. Mark Mulder will face Dontro Willis. Cardinals lead it one to nothing. Willis can hit. Hits it out to left field. One pitch and one out. So to Gucci there. Monday night on FSN Midwest, we present you Red Sox Yankees, the ultimate rivalry, an all access look at the emotionally charged battles between two of baseball's most storied teams. The 21st Century Edition stacks up with DiMaggio against Williams, Reggie and Yaz. That's Monday at 10.30, only here on FSN Midwest. I'll be looking forward to watching that. New element of Johnny Damon yeah. switching uniforms. Clubs uh, buying for Roger Clemens' services. Well, there's a report put out by Richard Justice, who writes for the Houston Chronicle, as Eckstein retires Handler Ramirez, but he reports it today out of the Houston Chronicle that the Astros have put together essentially a $20 million package for five months of his services. $20 million for Roger Clemens. That's a pretty serious offer. Yeah, but why would you do it for five months when he says he won't come back before June 1st? Exactly. So is there a trick to it? Maybe they're counting on that uh, month of postseason play. They don't get paid then. Maybe they're adding that into the, uh, the contract. He was content being home recently because his son, Cody, had a broken finger. Wasn't playing, but says book for the month of May. Out to right, Incarnacion is there, and it's the first one, two, three inning for Mulder. Roland Edmonds to Gucci coming up with the Cardinals up by a run. 
Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. By Affleck, ask about it at work. And by Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. Live look outside Dolphin Stadium. Cardinals and the Marlins, one to nothing St. Louis as we move to the top of the fourth. And along with Albert Bosque, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Scott Rowland laid it off. He singled and scored on the pass ball. It was the bases loaded. Mark Mulder at the plate and a pass ball with two down allows Rowland to score the first run of this game. Two balls and one strike on Rowland. Return to the lineup on Thursday. Missed nine games. And this one is hit out to right field. May drop for a hit, and it does. Scott Rowland, who struck out three times last night, is two for two tonight. The first 20,000 women, 16 and over, with a paid admission, receive a Tab Energy Deerberg's Canvas Tote Bag. Compliments of Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Cardinals and Deerberg's. That's coming up on Sunday, May 14th. For tickets, log on to stlcardinals.com. Click on the Prime C Club for ticket information. Roll in two for two, and here's Edmonds. He doubled down the third base line, first time up, backs away from a strike. But Scott Rowland missing all that time, but yet leads the club in doubles. He's got six on the year. Uh, and you also know how much he's hurting. His stiff, his legs, back, and everything from those nine days off where he was sick, lost 10 pounds. He gets tomorrow off, and he'll earn it. Pitch that misses in to Edmonds. Got the base hit away from him. So now they're working him on the inside part of the plate. That's where Jimmy sometimes will guess inside and try to hit the ball hard and pull it. Swing and a miss on off speed pitch, and he finds himself in the hole one and two. Edmonds has picked up 20 RBIs on the season, and five of those have been game winners. Yeah, he had 14 a year ago, so they've been productive when there was a pitch he might have been guessing fastball but he got the breaking ball and he was kind of pulling off it <laughs> sticks the bat out and picks up a base hit out to left center field rolling around second he's on his way to third with the aggressive base running easily in there and it's first and third nobody out Edmonds all smiles over there at first base I'm not sure even he had the the bat in his hands when no. he finished up I that mean, swing I mean it's the same thing I think he's he's guessing and thinking he's going to get a pitch inside and he's, you know, pulling off it and almost just throws the bat at it. <laughs> and there it just makes solid enough contact that it falls in between and rolling with that great, see, just trying to protect. It's almost like it was a, a hit and run, but Scotty wasn't running on the pitch, but he really knows how to run and he runs the base as well. He goes from first to third as well as anyone. So Taguchi struck out. First time up with runners at second and third and one down. With Taguchi, you can do a lot of things. Squeeze play is always an opportunity for Tony La Russa with his bat control. So do a safety squeeze. Right. And runner at third, it's not a suicide where he has to come and break on the pitch. You can wait and see where the ball is, is hit and placed. Cardinals had 22 successful squeezes a year ago. A grounder hit left side, bobbled by Cabrera, and scoring is rolling, and safe at first to Gucci. Two to nothing, Cardinals. Uh, this should be a nothing-nothing ball game. Scott Rowan, if, if Cabrera would have picked that up cleanly, he throws Rowan out the plate. He doesn't even get that part. Scott going on contact. So when the ball was made, he comes home. But look at, he was dead out, but he didn't look it in the glove. He makes another error. It's eight already on the year. And Taguchi is safe at first also. And he actually hesitated twice running down the line at third. Roland did. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's going, oh, I'm dead. Right. <laughs> and he scores a second run of the game. Now it's Molina. Two to nothing Cardinals on a pass ball and an error. 
Intentional pass, his first time up to get to Mulder, and then that was when the pass ball took place. Runners at first and second. Taguchi at first, Edmonds at second. And Molina shoots one foul and out of play. And this is where I talked earlier about Dontrell Willis really has to keep his concentration. Don't let these mis miscues behind him affect his pitching. And just blow up and, and lose it. He still has a responsibility to keep the game close. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Taking a little low. Dontrell Willis, born in Oakland, California. Now makes his home in Florida. And Molina hits it out of play again. 22-game winner a season ago is Dontrell. Third best ERA in, in baseball. And a battle between he and Carpenter for the Cy Young. He finished second for Chris. Joining Kevin Brown as the only Marlins to finish his highest second in the balloting. Brown did it back in 1996. 2-2 two -two pitch. Molina right at the shortstop. Good base running by Edmonds. That is tough. This thing at first base, coach tells you, don't get double off on a line drive, but you have to register it in your mind and quickness with your reactions. Hard hit ball off the bat of Yadier Molina. And with one out, the batter will be Mark Mulder. And now Dontrell wants to talk it over with Cabrera. Of course, this could be a sacrifice situation with the pitcher up. Yeah, Cabrera is giving the defensive signals to the infield. And then usually, I don't know why, you have to verbally tell the pitcher. And Mulder swinging away. Good cut. A much better cut than the first time up when he virtually looked at three strikes. Back looked uh, pretty good on that swing. Had to feel pretty good to swing as hard as he did. He had the corners charging. Cabrera giving the signs again. They had the shortstop breaking to try and get the Edmonds, the lead runner at third. A spin and no throw. And it started with a single. By Scott Rowland, Edmonds a base hit, an error by Cabrera scored a run and then a line out. That time a breaking pitch and a swing and a miss by Mulder. He finds himself in the hole, nothing and two. David Eckstein on deck. The last start, Dontrell Willis surrendered eight earned runs to the Phillies, tying his career high. He's now matched that three times, but talking with the Florida personnel, they thought that he actually pitched fairly well in that game despite giving up eight runs. Mulder trying to bunt and he strikes out. Well, I think we can see in the first two games of this series that you can pitch well but your defense doesn't make plays behind you. Exactly. And those, those runs can pile up. Third strikeout for Dontra Willis and now it's David Eckstein. Former Florida Gator was a walk on. Turned himself into an All-American. Was with Boston, Anaheim, and now St. Louis. His dad, Whitey, as Al told you, is in the stands and healthy. Kidney transplant a year ago. The 0-2 pitch, or rather the first pitch to him. Saw the 0-2 on the Fox box at the top of our screen. The first pitch is lined to the third baseman, Cabrera. Cardinal Strand, two. And they pick up a run and lead it by two. Suntrep win one for the kids charity fund 35 Cardinals home runs and Suntrep will donate $100 for every Cardinal home run. Uh, thanks to Suntrep sponsoring Cardinal baseball. Three four and five in the order for the Marlins. Down by two runs. Miguel Cabrera walked his first time up. Mulder has walked two on the night. Saddened by the news of the passing of Mike Kelly's mother this past week. Mike Kelly, longtime voice of the Missouri Tigers. Want to send our condolences to Mike and his family. 
one of the great people in our business and uh, had a chance to meet his mother on a couple of occasions. Wonderful lady, and she will be missed. So, And sorry to hear about Andy Davenport's mother passed away last night. So, Andy and your family, we feel terrible for your loss. The one-two pitch. X Brown, Jim Delsing does. The man who pinch ran for the midget. And just what a class act he's been with his family. Brown ball to Hector Luna. For the first down. It brings in Josh Willingham. He grounded into a double play. One to four three his first time up. Uh, what a difference for Mulder. He's seen him just get ground ball after ground ball and you know he's on pretty pretty much on top of his game when he does that he's already induced one double play he's induced 10 to lead the National League in that department good pitch bullpen for the Marlins has uh, Joe Borowski the former Cup closing their games out Todd Jones kind of rejuvenated his career a year ago Picked up a contract in the offseason. And now it's Joe Borowski. One ball, one strike with one out. Cardinals leading two to nothing. Willingham is also a catcher. Uh, because of that bat and his power potential. Try and keep him in the lineup. One two pitch. Hold foul. This is his third year with the Marlins. And the first time he made an opening day roster in the major leagues. 304 and 16 games with the Marlins last year and 324 with 19 home runs and 66 games for triple A. Albuquerque. We're not going to see the Marlins until Final month of the uh, season, just about. I think it's late August. Yep. I know Tony LaRusso will have some words of encouragement for Joe Girardi at that time. You know, Joe's going to be a father again in September. Is that right? Yeah. The little Gerd, girl, his his uh, third child to be born. And he's got a daughter that's six, son that's four. Joe finished up his career with the Cardinals back in 03. Then 04 and 05, he was with the Yankees. Spent some time in the broadcast booth on the Yes Network. Bench coach for Joe Torre a year ago. The 3 2 pitch outside. Third walk handed out by Mulder. That's the only blemish on his resume tonight is the three walks. Number five. Orchard walked his first time up. One out runner at first. Long look by Mulder over that runner. Mulder would love a double play here. Cardinals have turned one, should have been two. Orchard for a big guy runs well. Saw that last night. He's got a good throwing arm. He's four for his first eight wearing this Marlins uniform. Put on waivers by Seattle earlier this week. He was two for nine with the Mariners and then four for eight in his two games since coming to the Marlins. How about that go from Seattle to Florida? I've done that uh, trip. It, it doesn't get any much longer, does it? No. I can give you my trip that was a little longer. Go ahead. Vancouver, puddle jumper to Seattle. And I even thought of you on that trip. There was a 
gentleman on that trip that had a neck brace on and we were jumping through bumpy weather. We had to hold him down. <laughs> we arrive in Seattle, off to Chicago. Off the glove of Scott Rowland on a fair ball. And then from Chicago to Fort Lauderdale, and then the drive up to Jupiter. To do a spring training game. That's right. <laughs> Glad you're young. It wasn't easy, I can tell you that. So base hit for Borchard, and now it's Olivo. Hit into a fielder's choice first time up. Runners at first and second. Should have been the second double play. The wide throw, Albert dropped it. And a little re reminder from Molina. Two to nothing, Cardinals here in the bottom of the fourth. And the 1 0 pitch. Ground ball left side, double play ball, rolling, and it's bobbled and dropped by Luna. Hit him right in the numbers, and the bases will be loaded. Absolutely perfect throw from Scott Rowland, and that's got to be turned. Wow, well, that's three that should be turned, and the Cardinals, with their good defense, only have one, but Luna knows it. They're going to say that he is out at second base. I'm a little surprised they call him out. He dropped that oh, ball. He did. Yeah, he should he, be it, safe. He, he should be safe. That's I not agree the exchange. He should no. be safe. Second base umpire Tim Timmons. That's a terrible call. It, yeah, and I mean, and there Joe Girardi every time, young team and wow, can't catch a break, but the Cardinals do. He just flat out dropped it. His throwing hand wasn't even near the glove, but like going in to go get it. Yeah. Voluntary release. You've got to reach in there, have control of it, and try to extract it. And his hand got didn't get into the glove yet. The other thing on top of that, I can't believe Joe Girardi hasn't come out to argue this. Well, see where Timmons is standing. He, he's got the back of the glove, so it he couldn't tell that that hand, the bare hand, had never reached into the glove. So. Cardinals were granted the benefit of the doubt. What a break. A strike on Mike Jacobs. So instead of having the bases loaded and one out, it's first and third, two down. It's partial justice because he should be out of the inning. It's now twice the Cardinals have had drop balls on would-be double plays. One thing I've noticed about Mulder tonight, not nearly as many curveballs that we saw in his last start. No, I, I just think that, you know, he's able to bend over and finish off his pitches, change speeds, you know, but he, but he can he can get down with his sinker. He couldn't pull that on even on that curveball. And, of course, you're talking about the hard hitting, red, hard hitting reds that, you know, were really swinging hot bats. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Third ball in the dirt and blocked by Molina. Two and one the count. Walt Jockety, the Cardinals GM, on this trip with us. He's talking with their gentleman. Larry Beinfest. Those GMs will have their work cut out for them as this offseason approaches. Cardinals, a lot of free agents, four fifths of their starting rotation, their center fielder. Of course, for the Marlins, is trying to find deals and steals out there. I see the Marlins have 
gone to really signing young players. It was Larry Beinfest with his young son, I assume. Two balls and a strike. Runners had first and third. And a ground ball pulled foul. Two and two the count. Girardi, you can see he has some of the tendencies of, of Joe Torrey. I wonder if they just got a pinch pit in his mouth or something, but tries to stay as calm as possible. He's going to have a lot of teaching. He's, he's got a good coaching staff. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss and a strikeout of Jacobs. And the first strikeout of the night for Mulder. We head to the fifth. Luna Pujols and Encarnacion coming up. The introduction of the Kia Sportage was a big announcement. And new owners like... Cardinals have a lead in the top of the fifth. Score two to nothing. We turn to the Hardy's hot pitch of the game. It's Mark Mulder and Mike Jacobs. Now the last delivery. You see Molina set up outside. The big breaking ball. And Pujols a young hitter for his first strikeout. But that was the right time to get one. Stranding two more runners they've stranded four that's Hector Luna Luna's hit into a double play dropped a double play ball and single he's one for two this one is blooped into right field may drop for a hit and it does Luna's aboard for the second time and he's thinking two that good speed by Hector Luna and a double. Well, he saw right in front of where Ugla, in an effort to try and go after that ball, accidentally kicked it. And that what allowed him to get the extra base. I want to remind you tomorrow, NBC action, as you see that Luna saw where it was right in front of him. He actually uh, had a little misstep, it looked like, at first, just to make sure and tag the bag. He did so, and he winds up at second, and now it's Pujols. Well, he was right at the bag, and he saw the second baseman kick the ball, and he started to take off, but like you said, he missed a step, didn't have to go look down and make sure he got it. First pitch to Albert was a ball. Identical pitch and Pujols spins away from it. He thought that was low and away. And it's one ball, one strike. And Albert pops it up a mile high out of play. Albert, the major league leader in home runs with 16. Is the National League Player of the Month for April. But you know, he's had a he's had a tough road trip as he's only three for sixteen. The one two is ripped into left field. Luna had to hold up to make sure it was gonna get through. And it's a base hit for Albert Pujols. The first two have reached. Albert is one for three on the night. And it brings in Juan Encarnacion. You wonder sometimes if a bad call from the umpire if it just gets him more locked in. But that ball's up out over the plate and just hit hard through the middle on the left side. Just gets right through there. But you see that ball's up. And you're right about Luna had to hold. Couldn't tell if that was going to be caught by the, the shortstop. Encarnacion with a drive into right field. That ball gets down. To the wall it goes. One run is in. That's Luna. Albert being waved in from first base. He can just trot on in. It's an RBI triple for one Encarnacion. The Cardinals lead it four to nothing. Albert, you know he's possessed when he's running around those bases and his question to be the scoring leader 
in the National League for four straight years. That ball down and away. You talked about him being a, uh, a low ball hitter. He plugs the gap out in right center. But Albert with that shin and that back, not running as well as you think. And he coasts a little bit too casually at the end. And they almost, they had, almost had a play on him. Yes, they did. Uh, trying to stretch out that back a little bit. the ball to Shin and Houston. That's Barkin. Scott Rowland a chance to add to this lead. It's four to nothing Cardinals. Rowland is two for two with two runs scored. And he's hit two little flares and so they pulled the infield in. But we will have a visit in the bottom half of this inning with Cardinals general manager Walt Chockety has been kind enough to come over to our booth and say hello. And Roland hits it down the right field line. It is slicing and just foul. Didn't see Walt last night, so you wonder if he went up to Jupiter to see the team play. And already the Marlins now with a left-hander getting loose in their pen. It's Jason Vargas, a former starter a year ago. Cardinals with nine hits against Dontrell Willis. Run in the second, another in the fourth, and two here in the fifth. Fouled away. But Scott Rowland quietly has his average at 342. We talked about it a little bit, you know, when you miss all the games he did with an illness, and now he's really stiff and sore trying to play. You just try, don't try to do too much. That's pulled foul. Mets over Atlanta six to five. It took 14 innings last night. The Mets won. Trying to get separation from themselves and the Braves. They've got some now. Eight game now nine game lead. Roland pulls it right to the third baseman. Hard hit but hit to Cabrera. It's the first out. Well, again, we remind you that the Missouri Valley Conference returns to FSM Midwest tomorrow. Missouri State Bears play host to the Creighton Blue Jays. Both teams vying for conference playoff positioning. The Bears and Blue Jays tomorrow at noon here on FSM Midwest. Now it's Edmonds. He's two for two with a double and a single. And Jimmy hits this one out to left. Incarnacion will tag up from third. Throw comes in. It's cut off. Incarnacion scores easily, and it's 5 to nothing Cardinals on the RBI number 21 for Jim Edmonds. Base is empty now with two outs, and it brings in Sotoguchi. And Willis is trying to get through this fifth. 94 pitches already. Base hit for Sotoguchi. Hit number 10 for the Cardinals. Fourth hit in this inning. And that's going to be it for Dontrell. They're already out to the end. Didn't send his pitching coach. Do you think that there will be a pitching change with the lefty Vargas warming up? Maybe not, but that's going to leave him in. A little surprising. Well, the first two runs, his defense betrayed him and gave those runs to the Cardinals, but all the runs this inning, all three, have been earned runs and have been tattooed against uh, Dontrell. I wonder about the game last night. If a couple plays are made behind Mitre, with the exception of the Pools home run, how that game turns out. That cost the Marlins. Opened up for a big inning for the Cardinals, seven runs in the fifth. And that was all she wrote. That was the difference in the game. 
He didn't do a lot of damage before that no. seven run fifth inning. Or really after it either. True. A line out off the bat of Molina. He hit one to short. He's also walked. Intentional pass back in the second. That was to get to Mulder. That loaded the bases with two outs. He eventually struck out. But before he struck out, it was a pass ball that allowed Scott Rowland to score the first run of this ball game. Two balls and a strike. You see Joe Girardi in the end of September or August. You see how, how his hair is doing. How gray it's gotten. How gray it's gotten or how much he's pulled out. Let's see how much is left. Aaron Cook. Little matchups looking for something better. You gotta figure when he accepted the job to become the Marlins manager. He knew he was going to have a young team. I'm not so sure he understood that for anybody at that time that it was going to be dismantled like this. I, I agree with you. And he's, he's kept a very positive spin on it where he said the right things, but I think deep down he felt a little betrayed. The count is three and two. stays alive. Taguchi was off with the pitch with two down and a full count. And we got the affirmative that the reliever is ready. Out to right center field off the bat of Molina. Taguchi was off with the pitch. They're going to try to wave him in with the pitcher coming up. Here comes Taguchi. Here comes a throw. He's safe. Tags it with his hand. And an RBI for Yadier Molina. RBI double makes it six to nothing. What are you going to be my star today? On base twice. Catching. Molder doing a nice job there. Big base hit that he needs. So Abercrombie gets it back in. And Ugler with a strong throw. He's got a good arm, but high and Gucci just slides by and touches home plate with his left hand. 11 hits for the Cardinals, six to nothing. Mark Mulder with a base hit into right center. Molina can just walk on home. That one all the way out to the track in right center field and an RBI double for Mulder to make it seven to nothing Cardinals. They have tagged Dontrell Willis for seven runs and 12 hits so far. And that's gonna be it. Already try to give them a couple extra batters to get the final out or get yeah the final out of this inning couldn't get it six hits in the inning here in South Florida for the Cardinals and they busted this one wide open tomorrow night the world's best poker players will once again gather to finally answer the question who is the greatest poker player in the world? Find out on the Poker Superstars 3 tomorrow at 8 p.m. only on FSN Midwest. Now Joe Girardi finally felt like he had to go to the bullpen and he brings up his only left-hander, Jason Vargas, who is our Chevy called to the bullpen. And there's Jason Vargas. He worked two scoreless innings on Thursday, his first relief appearance of the season. He began the season going one and one with five starts. And here is uh, David Eckstein, ninth man to bat in the inning. The Cardinals in the fifth last night batted around. And David is one for three on the night. Dottrell not sharp tonight. Twelve hits allowed, seven runs. Struck out three. And he walked one. There's a 2 0 -oh pitch.
Korean one. Dontrell just on the verge of losing his third straight ball game. A couple of eight earned runs he gave up last time out, and the seven to this point. Uncharacteristic for a 22 game winner a year ago. Cold count now on David Eckstein. Vargas out of Long Beach, California. Played at uh, Long Beach State. That'd be a little culture shock, though, for Willis to go from, you know, little championship caliber teams to having about 12 rookies. That's a base hit into right. They're going to hold up Mulder. He's got a good arm. And with a seven-run lead, no need to get Mark Mulder hurt on a play at the plate. Bat around this inning. Still can't quite close the book on Willis yet. That man is still his responsibility. Mulder, the runner at the third base, and now it's Luna. He started everything with a double. A little bloop double. It's fifth inning in yesterday's ball game where they scored all seven of their runs. They've got five here in the fifth tonight. First pitch to Hector. A throw down, and Eckstein is back in safely. These two teams very uh, familiar with each other, sharing the same spring training complex in Jupiter. They were had a nice winning percentage in spring training. They're all playing hard, and that's the only thing that Girardi can hold his head high and say, well, they're playing hard, but it's a learning process. One ball, one strike. Hector Luna is grounded into a double play, single to left and doubled, a bloop shot to right. Average up to 345. The combination of Luna and Miles has worked out at second base thus far. The 2-1 pitch out in front, pops it up behind home plate. Well, that's one of the things that when we talked to Walt Jockman, he could tell you that going into spring training before the signing of Junior Spivey, he was pretty comfortable with just the Miles Luna combination. But then they felt that Spivey is a guy they always had considered. They drafted him one time. They did not sign out of high school. It's off his foot and foul. Luna looking back at Albert Pujols and Pujols a quick little lesson for him. By keeping his weight back. Albert's a guy that instructs some of the minor leaguers in spring training. It's a ball taken outside, and it's three and two. And Luna's biggest fan is waiting on deck. I guess Vargas hadn't looked over there yet. Runner from first, that's Eckstein. He's off with the pitch. Fouled back by Luna. Vargas was drafted, what, second round in the 04. He's gotten to the big leagues quickly, but that's what Girardi's having to deal with. An awful lot of young players. Growing pains here at the big league level. The next pitch. And Luna pops it up behind home plate, out of play. Top of the fifth, seven nothing Cardinals. A look at our box score, and everybody's got a hit. A count of three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners at first and third. Cardinals have picked up a run in the second, one in the fourth, and five. Here in the fifth. And Luna hits it off the mound, too short. Hanley Ramirez is there across the diamond. Two holes is left on deck. Seven hits in the inning and five runs scored as the Cardinal offense comes alive. 
13 hits already tonight through five, and it's seven to nothing St. Louis. A visit with Walt Jockety, Cardinals GM, is coming up. Cardinals have knocked Dontrell Willis out of this game, and they lead it behind a 13-hit attack, 7 to nothing. Dan McLaughlin, Albert Bosky, and Walt Jockety, the Cardinals GM, is with us. We thank you for your time, Walt. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, especially uh, with a seven-run lead. You know, surprisingly, it's easier to get you when your club is up by seven runs. Right. And there's a base hit, a double for Reggie Abercrombie, and that's how we start the Marlins half of the fifth against Mark Mulder. Well, we're just about uh, past... The first month of the season. Matter of fact, we just passed it. What have you thought of uh, your squad so far? Well, we had a, you know, obviously the month of April was outstanding. And, uh, uh, you know, I think, and we, you know, I don't believe we played up to our potential yet. We still haven't really started to click with everybody. And, you know, Albert had a little uh, achy back for a while. And, and uh, Edmonds had some uh, physical problems. And, and Roland was sick. And, and Canarcion really hadn't gotten started yet so I think that there's so many things to look forward to because this, this team is going to when it starts clicking on all cylinders going to be a, a lot better. Walter I noticed you were talking with your counterpart from the Marlins uh, Larry Beinfest. Right. How does that conversation go. <laughs> <laughs> well he was on the phone with his owner part of the time. So. <laughs> but I mean no he you know it's uh, we're talking about their club is obviously sharing spring training facility. We we get a chance to see each other a lot and we talked about uh, where their club was going this year and and you know they're, they're having a lot of a lot of uh, problems right now because they're so young but uh, you know he's uh, they're trying to build something there and they're trying to build around the two quality players they have and and uh, try and build from there they've, they've added another good player this week with Joe Borchard and keep pecking away but you know there is a guy named Cabrera that's it's pretty good it's not bad. It's not bad. Of course, we don't know if he's available for any team to go out and get him, but I'm sure doesn't sound like it. I'm sure you'll inquire if there <laughs> is an opportunity. Doesn't sound like it. Good play by Roland and Wes Helms is retired. Yeah, you have, you know, with a scouting and a farm director's type background, mm -hmm. you can you can understand how difficult it is to bring so many talented players at one time, but you can see that there is a great deal of talent that the Marlins have. Well, there there is, and it's but you got to really be patient and uh, they, they they cut it way back and uh, you know some clubs have done it in the past where they they've traded off a few guys and still kept a, a nucleus of a, a club but you know they really cut it way back and and uh, but they do have some talented players they got some very talented players their triple-a club in Albuquerque where they're, they're uh, winning their division out there in the coast league and so they <clears throat> you know just to question they're not drawing, but I don't know if they drew that well uh, in the last couple of years when they were winning. So, it, 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 and the one thing you got to give them credit for, these guys have won a couple of world championships. It's been different regimes, but, you know, different ownerships. But uh, they've won a couple of world championships in the last 10, 12 years, whatever it's been. And, um, you know, so who's to say the way they're doing it's not right. But of course, it's, 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 it'd be tough to watch every night. They, uh, of course, are looking for a new ballpark in this area. The Cardinals get their new ballpark. What have you thought of it so far? I like it. You know, it's, uh, um, you know, a lot of great features, and I think we're still not sure how well it's, uh, you know, which way it's going to play. You know, seem to be a couple of areas where the ball has uh, gotten out in a hurry, but other places uh, not. And I think, so I think it's still going to be a pretty fair ballpark. Ramirez is thinking extra bases. Into the corner it goes. Taguchi will get it. And the Ramirez will stop at second base and picks up the first Marlins RBI of the night. So two doubles allowed in this inning by Mark Mulder. And the Marlins get on the board, and it's 7-1. Ramirez is a pretty impressive player. Yeah, he is. They, they, uh, uh, the player they picked up in the trade for uh, uh, Beckett with Boston, and, and Hanley Ramirez was one of the top young players in their organization and, and last year they, they weren't going to wouldn't even think of trading them and they when they signed Renteria they had second thoughts so they they did trade him and uh, then they traded Renteria so it's hard to figure out <laughs> what they're doing up there but anyhow they handling Ramirez is a, a very good looking player defensively and offensively runs well and, and uh, he's another one of those young players you can build around. How about interesting <laughs> thing you got Ugla 
right. a rule five yep. draftee playing second base. You have Hector Luna, a rule five playing second. Right, and I, I saw Ugla play in the uh, fall league. He was with uh, Diamondbacks and, and had a good good year at AAA last year and, and uh, with the Diamondbacks and played great in the, in the fall league. And uh, the Marlins drafted him in the rule five draft in December, and he's uh, you know, really, he had a good spring. I really liked him in spring training. I saw him, and, and uh, they kept him, and it's a hitting nice, hitting close to 270. So he's, he's a pretty good-looking player. Dan Ugla is digging in against Mark Mulder. It's 7-1 Cardinals. Walt Jockety is with us. And with Mulder on the mound, it's, it's a good time to ask you this because fans come up to us all the time and ask us, when will the Cardinals start negotiating with some of the free agents that they have? Four fifths of the starting rotation, Mulder being one of them. So I will pose that question to you. When does, uh, when does the organization start thinking about doing this? Well, uh, the only comment I'll make is it, it, we have been thinking about it, and we aren't going to really uh, discuss any, any contract negotiations because it just becomes a uh, uh, distraction and... We've got so many free agents this year that it, uh, if we started discussing each one individually, it would be a major distraction. So we, we've decided to take a different approach this year and uh, just uh, kind of uh, not uh, not comment on it. And, and Walt, it just opens a whole can of worms. When you start doing it, feelings get hurt. Right. Personalities, you know, you know, they're all close-knit bunch of guys, but you never know how somebody's going to react. Right. And that's that's uh, one of the big dangers you have, and, and it's just we're in a unique situation. We have four starting pitchers who are free agents, and all four of them are pretty good. <laughs> so, and uh, so you got to be you got to be very careful how you deal with it. We also get asked a lot about Spivey and, and Bigby. How are those two progressing? Uh, Bigby played his final uh, rehab game today, and. Uh, uh, so he, he should be ready to join the club uh, when we get back. And uh, uh, we'll have to probably make a move to get him on at that time. And then uh, uh, Spivey is, is uh, I was just in Memphis for three days and watched that club, and he's still struggling. And it's uh, it's a real mystery to us. We can't, can't figure it out because um, this guy was a very good player at one time, but he's uh, struggling uh, offensively. Going to hold the runner at third base. Pujols almost able to apply the tag on Ugla. It took a wide turnaround first. And it's runners at the corners with one out and Miguel Cabrera digging in. Key spot in this game coming up right here. That is. This is uh, it's good to see Dunk going out to talk to me. Inside out stroke out there. Incarnacion. We know he has a very good throwing arm, but. I know you held your breath when you watched Albert try to go to get the force <laughs> out of at first, and then first you thought he was going to dive, then you thought he was going to get tangled up and hurtle over the, I the runner. Forgot, I almost forgot I had a microphone. In front of <laughs> Trust me, Fox would remember. <laughs> uh, what's on tap is uh, brought to you by Bud Light. Cardinals and Marlins tomorrow at noon. And Wayne and Ricky will be with you on the WB. Cardinals and Marlins, what's on tap, brought to you by Bud Light. Miguel Cabrero, runners at first and third, 7-1 St. Louis. Here in the Marlins half of the fifth. Walt Jockety is with us. I thought this would be a nice, easy inning. I thought so, too. Yeah, I thought we'd breeze through this, but... How about a double play right here? I don't think he's capable of that. It just never seems like... He ever is pushing himself on the mound. He's about as fluid and yeah. easy a guy you'll ever watch in this Very game. Smooth. Yeah. You said, Walt, that you haven't really clicked in all cylinders yet. Where do you th where do you think you need to pick it up with with your club? Where, where do you see it as you evaluate it? Um, I think our offense could be could be better. I think we, you know it's it's hard to say scoring 14 runs the last two right. games, but um, you know we, we're we're capable of doing more. But you know we. I said we, we, we haven't had uh, everybody healthy or uh, playing at the same time, so uh, that's one thing. I, you know, I think when we get everybody on the field, we can get everybody out there playing and, and uh, uh, keep them healthy. I think we'll, we'll start scoring some runs, or, and that's that's. Really, I think our pitching's been been good. I think our bullpen's been good, and uh, just uh, we get a little more consistent with our offense. We talked a little bit last night how the negotiations 
or the collective bargaining agreement have already started, and that's good news in itself. Yeah, it is, because uh, one thing this game doesn't need right now is any kind of work stoppage or any any really distraction with that either, you know, negotiations and, and that sort of talk. So uh, it would be great if, if they could work something out and get something done before uh, anybody even knows about it. Would you anticipate that uh, there would be at least a floor where teams have to meet a salary structure? As this one is smoked back to left center field. Edmonds watching it. It stays in the ballpark off the wall. He scales the wall to get it back in quickly. Relay to the plate is cut off. Now nope, they're going to let it go through. Two runs score. RBI double for Cabrera. He's picked up two more RBIs. That's numbers 20 and 21. And Mulder's allowed three runs in this inning. It's 7-3. It seems like a lot of the pitches have been in the middle of the plate, maybe up a little bit. But Cabrera is a legitimate hitter. He hits this to the deepest part of the field. It's 434 out there in that corner. And then it takes an odd angle. And Edmonds had to scale the wall just to, to corral it and get it back in. But this is still only one out in this inning. And it started with the eighth place hitter. Right. Could be a broken bat. That one is hit to short. Eckstein across to Pujols. And there's two outs. But again, back to the question before the double was, do you anticipate at least a floor to where teams like the Marlins couldn't have a payroll of $14 million? You know, maybe it's 25, 30, 35, yeah, whatever the I, case you know, may I, be. I, I know. Um, you know, it's hard to say, but I would think that that's something that the union would, would uh, the Players Association would probably want to have. Sure. Because it's... Uh, uh, I think George Steinbrenner would agree with it, too. Yeah, I think so. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with myself. But, you know, I shouldn't comment too much on that stuff. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I think there's, there should be some kind of parameters that you know, at the high end and the low end. And, uh, you know, most clubs are in that. I mean, you have a couple of uh, uh, clubs that are, are kind of at the extremes. But otherwise, I think most clubs are kind of in that, that, that one... Uh, band there of, of, uh, of salary uh, payrolls and it's that's the way it should be and it, in, a, in a clubs like Milwaukee and and uh, uh, even Houston they don't their, their payrolls up a little bit but there are some clubs that aren't spending a great deal of money they're still continuing to uh, do do better and, and win so you feel this current CBA is is provided parity and it's working yes absolutely Scott rolling to his left Across to Albert Pujols, we'll let you go relax and enjoy the ball game. <laughs> he didn't bring much luck this inning. No, it's not a good inning. No. Mulder allows three. Thank you, Walter. All right, thank you, guys. You got it. 7-3 as we head to the sixth. Did you ever pitch? Well, tomorrow the NBC returns to FSM Midwest. The Missouri State Bears play host to the Creighton Blue Jays as both teams vie for conference playoff positioning. The Bears and Blue Jays tomorrow at noon here on FSN Midwest. Who holds to lead it off in the sixth, and the Cardinals lead it 7-3. We thank Walt Jockey for stopping in, but you know, it was 7 nothing before he <laughs> showed up. That's right. Walter ran into a bit of trouble in that uh, last half inning. Also glad that he remembered he had a microphone on. Yes. <laughs> or we'd both be doing disclaimers. That's Paying Walt. A, That's Walt. Paying a fine. <laughs> Nothing in two the count on Albert. Four run lead for the Cardinals here in the sixth. And he chases a ball. Well, you don't see that very often. Pujol strikes out. He's one for four on the night. <laughs> as if he made up his mind he was going to swing no matter where this pitch was. Uh, and look at just how completely away from where the design of the pitch was supposed to be inside and it's up and away. Just so bad that it was effective. That one floats in there for a strike. Jason Vargas went up the end. Ladder, A ball, two different levels of A ball, double A last year, and then Florida.
Encarnacion with an RBI triple that scored two. Part of that five-run fifth inning for St. Louis. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts in the inning. Two pretty good major league hitters. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals, LLC. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of the game. may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals, LLC. That's a pretty shock. Like that shot? I do. But Vargas here. Nothing in two on Scott Rowland. Looking to uh, strike out the side here in the top of the sixth. He's 23 years of age. Like we said, he worked his way up to the big leagues last year. He's five and five. Started first five starts this year. Didn't work well. Scott two for three and actually his line drive to third was the hardest hit ball of his three at bats. Made his fourth opening day with the Cardinals in Philadelphia. Hammered out to right center field and making the catch Reggie Abercrombie. Cardinals go one two three. The bottom of the sixth is coming up. Cardinals have out hit the Marlins 13-6. They lead it 7-3 here in the bottom of the six. Mark Mulder trying to pick up career win number 100 tonight. Miguel Olivo the hitter. Split last season with San Diego, Seattle, and Tacoma, their AAA affiliate. That one way inside. That time was called, I believe. Jeff Nelson granted time, and Mulder went ahead and executed the pitch. 1 and 0. Yeah, it's 1 and 0, not 2 and 0. Back in Mulder, off his glove, gathers himself and fires to first. Good play by Mark Mulder. All right, great camera work right there. Set. Cardinal Baseball on FSM Midwest is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Enjoy the big taste and big value of Jack's delicious value menu. By your local St. Louis Chrysler Jeep dealers. And by U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Enjoy that camera work, huh? Oh, yeah, it just makes it feel so good. To see a rocket come right back at you. And didn't panic. Little chopper up the middle, taken by Eckstein. Takes his time. And there's two outs. And it brings in Reggie Abercrombie. We're talking about that new stadium deal for the Marlins. It was rejected yesterday. They ran out of time in their session. And also in the back of the minds of the lawmakers is how much money they could dedicate to the Marlins for a new stadium after what the Hurricanes have done the last couple of years and how much money needs to be handed out, taxpayer money, to help those that need it most. Yeah, the priority was the insurance. Right. And to hold down the costs of hurricane insurance little twist was the Senate normally is the one that you know is is the deal breaker and they passed it for 15 minutes left but the house didn't have time right and I read someplace it was talking about it would be the ninth sports franchise to get a 60 million dollar ninth sports franchise here in, in Florida to be granted that 60 million And of course, that means that your rental car tax will go up. Right. And hotel tax will go up. They just can't continue to do what we see here tonight. No, it doesn't make sense. Two balls, two strikes. 
reasons why Major League Baseball would like it here is one is the television, you know, money, but another close proximity to the Caribbean, and South America. The three two pitch from Mulder. Ground ball hit to Scott Rowland. So Mulder settles down. They just get Amber Crombie. A one two three inning. Seventh inning coming up for the Cardinals. Andrew Roth is tonight's merchandise winner in the Hyundai Long Drive Inning Sweepstakes. If the Cardinals hit a home run in the seventh, Andrew Roth qualifies for the Hyundai Sonata. In September, that drawing, and you can register by visiting a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Jim Edmonds will lead it off. He's got an RBI and a couple of hits. Saw him last night. Franklin German. This will be his 11th appearance. Our call to the bullpen is brought to you by Chevrolet. Claimed off of waivers from Detroit on April the 4th. Spent the majority of his time with Detroit during the 2002 to 2005 seasons. Mark Mulder's at 91 pitches thrown. He's due up fourth in the inning, and the Cardinals have a right-hander getting loose. And the first pitch to Edmonds is taken for a ball. Our ten batters are batting 111, or excuse me, 186 off of German, and right-handers 111. 1-0 pitch to Jimmy again inside. That one at 92, two and nothing. Edmonds here, then to Gucci. And Molina. Jimmy's due to crank one. He's got four on the year. It's on throwing every pitch down and in the ball four. Next pitch to Edmonds. There's a strike three and one. Last home run for Jimmy was back home against Washington. Fastball away on a 3-1 pitch. Here it comes. Edmonds pops it up left side. Of course, we're talking with uh, Walt Jockety a couple innings ago about those starters and the free agents. Decision time on Edmonds with his contract up. Option year. Whether or not the Cardinals want to pick it up. I Jim think, has told me he wants to retire in St. Louis. Yeah, and he'd like a couple years added to it. Edmonds down the right field line. It is hooking and just foul. Yes. Came very close to calling one. You're right. I've missed 99.3% <laughs> since and, we started doing and games. I hope you may, and I hope you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, as you look at this ball, just go to the right of the foul pole. But after a disappointing year last year for Edmonds, you got to play this year. Just gets a piece. Everybody says it was a disappointing year, including average-wise. It know, was his average, right? Yeah. You know, RBIs and home runs were fine, and he played fantastic defense again. It was just his average was down for what we're normally uh, accustomed to with Edmonds. He was in that 260 range. 263, if I remember right. Two sixty three twenty nine home runs eighty nine RBIs. Those are down power numbers but still very respectable. Yeah. A splitter grip. The three two to Edmonds in the dirt. Good at bat by Jim. And a leadoff walk to start the seventh. We're still looking for Cardinal baseball tickets. The newly renovated Hilton St. Louis at the ballpark is a chance to get some tickets as they have a couple of baseball packages for you. Two of those 
both with Bush Stadium View Rooms and a free Make Your Own Fred Bird from the Build-A-Bear Workshop at Bush. And for more information, visit HiltonStLouis.com. Edmonds aboard, and now so to Gucci. He squares and bunts it in the air. It's going to drop, though. Edmonds had to wait and see if it was going to be caught, so the sacrifice is good. Well, they had Edmonds dead to right if he just would have thrown to second base, but a very tough running play as the pop-up, and it looked like at least two, if not more, had a chance to catch the pop-up. And especially the pitcher. Well, he just looked straight to first base, and Edwins was not even halfway when the out was basically recorded at first. Al, he was about three steps. Right. You know, that was it. Well, when you see from that angle, it sure looked like German was going to catch it. RBI double last time for Molina. John Rodriguez has moved to the on deck circle, so that looks to be it for Mulder. With one out and a 7-3 Cardinal lead. If the Cardinals can hold on, it's victory number 100 for Mulder in his career. The 1-0 pitch. 93 miles an hour is Joe Girardi talking it over with Dontrell Willis. Mulder. Seen the bullpen take away that 100th victory and more a few times, but you can just sit and wait. Ground ball left side, and Cabrera is there. Fires over to first, and there's two outs. Well, for Molina, that's three hard hit balls tonight. He lined out, he doubled, and now the ground out, and it brings in John Rodriguez. So that ends the night for Mulder as he goes six. Gives up three runs on six hits. How about John Rodriguez? Eight-game hitting streak. During that time, 11 for 21, 524 average, 429 overall. On this road trip, he's seven for 14, a 500 average. He was two for five last night. So just 91 pitches thrown by Mulder tonight and he's in line for the victory Cardinals have a right hander getting loose in the pen two outs runner at second base the pitch to Rodriguez up and in couple hits last night for John he was hitting in the second spot in the lineup in front of Pujols. And when Tony La Russa has that option with a right-handed pitcher on the mound, more times than not now, it's going to be John Rodriguez playing left field. Well, he seemed like he's learned to handle that spot in the order. Had the most success. He's dancing up there in the box, two and nothing. He did face German last night in that eighth inning where it was perfect. And John popped up the third base. Two oh pitch coming to John Rodriguez. Ball up and in and it's three and oh. With David Eckstein on deck, so this pitch has got to be perfect if he's going to be swinging away. There's Adam Wainwright. Try and come in here and preserve this victory. Pitched on Thursday, two scoreless innings, and he struck out three. The 3-0 to J-Rod. It's a strike. Thought it was ball four. Three and one. 429 batting average for John Rodriguez. Edmund started the inning with a walk off a of German. And the sacrifice, a ground out, now J Rod. That's strike two.
Rodriguez can hit the fastball, but he has made great strides in adjusting to breaking pitches and off-speed pitches. And that's what it is. It's, it's just making adjustments. Time called. And he felt like when he came up here, nobody knew him, so he, he would see a lot of fastballs. He did so. He did a lot of damage. Then they started saying, okay, let's find out if we hit the breaking balls, and he was way overmatched. And now he's made an adjustment to it. Here's a 3-2. Inside for ball four. Let's go back to the uh, singular wireless question. Who is the most dominating lefty in baseball? One of your choices was Steve Klein. And Steve Klein. Wow. Is the overwhelming winner. Look at how Randy Johnson is falling by the wayside. <laughs> All right, runners at first and second. And David Eckstein will be the hitter. And now a conference on the mound with Olivo and Franklin German. Two runners on. Eckstein is lined out, singled couple of times and also fly to right. The pitch is taken for a ball up and away. David is hitting 303. 19 runs scored. One home run and eight RBIs. Usually makes a pitcher throw strikes. Something that's been about 50-50 with this guy. A pitch that's up and in, nowhere close, and he falls behind on David. Makes you throw strikes, and he makes contact. He has missed just 12 of 211 swings coming into play tonight. That's something else. Here's a 2-0. Way inside to Eckstein. Loon on deck, and German can't find the zone. Fell behind 3-0 on Rodriguez, then worked at 3-2, eventually walked him, and now he's fell, fallen behind 3-0 on the Cardinal leadoff man. Well, like I said, you know, David's the kind of guy that's just going to wait him out, and he'll probably throw four balls before he'll throw three strikes. They feel this is the problem with this young pitching staff that the Marlins have assembled. Walks. Three this inning. Yep, third in the inning. Bases are loaded. No activity in the Marlins bullpen yet. German in relief of Vargas, who was very good. In relief of Willis, who was not. Dontrell Willis lasted four and two-thirds. Gave up six runs and 12 hits. And Hector Luna will dig in with the bases loaded. Can't believe the Marlins don't have anybody up and throwing. This guy can't find his own. His one out was a sacrifice. And the other one was a hard hit ball by Molina that took a good play by Cabrera to his left. The problem is that, you know, you, by the time you warm somebody up, and it's kind of a wasted warm up, they'll, they'll record an out or so. But, you know, he's got all, you got a bad defensive team behind you, and, and they're all standing flat footed because of the three walks in the inning. Two outs, bases loaded, 7 3 Cardinals. In their half of the seven. Up and into Luna. Nowhere close. Two holes on deck. If you're Luna, do you take a strike, if not maybe two? Should take at least one. I was just trying to guide it in there. That one at 83 miles an hour, and it's 2-0. and oh, And the crowd a little bit restless. Walks an RBI, Hector. Push for at least that five run lead. And he's swinging away on 2 0. Oh. Al, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't do that. Not well, after he's walked three in the inning. Yeah, you know, a lot of hitters, 
managers today say, you know, you don't want to take the bat out of a guy's hands, but it's just common sense. And obviously, he didn't do it, wasn't the pitch he was looking for, the where he fouled it. And Luna hits it out to deep center field. On the move, Abercrombie, can he get there? Yes, and he makes the catch. Near the track, he's got that good speed. And German gets out of the inning and a hard hit ball by Luna. He strands the bases loaded. Cardinals are leading the Marlins 7-3. And let's go back to today's pitch by pitch feature brought to you by your Mid America Chevrolet dealers. Starts him out with a 93 mile an hour fastball. He's walked three in a row. Then it's a fork ball. It's 2 and 0. Oh. You think he's going to take. He just gets a little piece of that off speed pitch. And now he gives this one right. It's a fastball, but he gives it right. He's stranded three. He hit that one well. That was the pitch he was looking for to drive the, the pitch before. But the bottom line is if he would have taken until strike one, Woody would have thrown enough strikes. I'd say no. After watching what had happened with the previous two hitters and still Joe Girardi visiting with Dontrell Willis. Uh, this is, you know, and, here, and here's Joe's got <laughs> one of his veteran guys and one of the guys he's counting on, and yet he's still a lot of teaching and counseling there. Third ball, and it's pulled fair by Wes Helms. Leadoff double against Adam Wainwright. Went down and got that breaking ball. Not many people have hit that breaking ball off of Adam Wainwright, who's appearing for the 10th time. He's got three holes, microscopic ERA of .66, and 14 strikeouts and 13 plus innings. So, come in here. He has been one of the most impressive pitchers we've had this season. And there's going to be some, you know, a learning curve for Adam this year too. It's not always going to go his way, but. What he has showed this year, you sure like to see the way his career is going to develop wearing the Cardinal uniform. So a runner at second, top of the order, Hanley Ramirez. Picked up an RBI double last time. Also scored a run. Our attendance tonight, 14,369. Cardinals lead it seven to three. Wainwright was dominant against Houston his last time out. And if the Cardinals are not able to sign all those free agents to be, you would figure that he would fit nicely into the starting rotation for the Cardinals. But the experience and the confidence he's gaining thrown out of the bullpen at this juncture is going to be invaluable for him next year in whatever role. Two balls and one strike. Wainwright is set. And the 2 1 pitch to Hanley Ramirez. Out to center field. Helms will draw a throw from Edmonds quickly back in. And that's the first out. Cardinal fans, if you're traveling and want to watch the Redbirds, check it out on MLB.tv. Watch the Cardinals on your PC. Get it at STLCardinals.com. It's MLB.tv. So one away, and now it's Dan Ugla. Walt was talking about how he was impressed with this guy's offense. The one thing they are very happy with is how much he's improved defensively. Ugla. Joe Girardi says he's the hardest working member on this uh, roster for the Marlins. Remember, they had Pokey Reese originally in camp, so Ugla was a guy that wasn't even supposed to make this team, but Pokey Reese left inexplicably and they let him go rule five pick up from the Diamondbacks pitch misses outside 
Southern League All-Star a year ago. Hit 297 at double A. Runner at second base, 7-3 Cardinals. The Marlins half of the seventh. Good pitch as that one just exploded back in. Good movement. Now Uglin, the whole one and two, and this is where Wainwright can put you away with that terrific breaking ball. And that was just a fastball there that locked him up inside. Get a couple options. Get him thinking about that fastball. Come back with that devastating curveball as he throws a slider. Here's a one two. Try to get him to chase in the dirt. And it's two and two. Well, I love how Wainwright goes right after the pitch is thrown to go get the baseball from Molina. And you always talk about projecting with your body language, confidence, and he's done that. Stand tall and erect, get your sign, come out firing. Just have a determined look on your face, not one of kind of questioning or unsure of yourself. 2-2 two -two is hit to short. Eckstein charges. And there's two outs. You now we talk about his curveball so much, but he's really trying to he's making good pitches with his fastball now also. Really getting in the guy's kitchens. Yep. Getting inside. This would be a good test for him right here. Cabrera has a double. A couple RBIs. He's one for two. Cardinals will have Pujols coming up in the uh, top of the eighth. Pujols, Encarnacion, and Roland. Redbirds lead it, seven to three. Deep left field. There's room, though, and the catch is made by Sotaguchi. Pujols will lead it off when we come back. Cardinals up by four runs. Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser, bright, crisp, clean, pure. This is Budweiser, this is beer. By Chevrolet, see your Mid-America Chevy dealer today, Chevy and American Revolution. And by Advance Auto, we're ready in advance. Albert Pujols will lead it off for the Cardinals. And Albert tonight has a run scored, a single, and he's one for four. He struck out his last time up. Ooh, good rip by Albert against Franklin German. German had three walks back in the seventh, but the Cardinals couldn't capitalize. They stranded the bases loaded. They have left 10 on tonight. The Cardinals fan, Susan Morris, is watching, hoping on her birthday for Albert's 17th home run. 29 games, 16 home runs for Pools. Talking about that first home run at Bush Stadium, the new Bush Stadium. You can obtain that ball through a Leland auction commencing on May 8th. Albert down the left field line. It's hooking and foul. First Cardinal home run hit by Albert Pujols at the new Bush Stadium he is being auctioned off on starting May 8th on Leland's.com auction. That's where a lot of Cardinal fans picked up a lot of great memorabilia this uh, offseason that the Cardinals auctioned off. Here's a one two pitch. Pools high in the air, out to left center. And the catch is made. See where Willingham was breaking back about four or five steps before he came back in. And Albert on the night is one for five. And it brings in Incarnacion. An RBI triple back in the fifth. Twice he grounded back to the pitcher. That was Dontrell Willis at the time. He tripled to right field and then struck out swinging back in the sixth. Rounder hit to short. Hanley Ramirez, two away. Any more strikes from the big guy this inning. Our next FSN telecast will be on Monday night. We're back home in St. Louis in Bush Stadium. Hope you can join us. As Jason Marquis will hook up with Jeff Francis and the Colorado Rockies will be in town. One of the surprise teams in the National League. How well they're playing. Rockies have gotten off to a good start with Clint Hurdle, their manager. And they're leading early 
nothing over Houston tonight in the second inning. They're four games above the 500 mark and tied with Arizona in the National League West. Aaron Miles, the former Colorado Rocky. And by what Walt Jockety said, that Larry Bigby will have joined the club by that time. So there'll be a roster move made. Off the glove of Cabrera, he doesn't know where it went. And it's out left field on that hard hit ball off the bat of Scott Rowland. Three hits tonight for Rowland. Tough night for that man in the field. And here's a look at the uh, miscues for the Marlins tonight. We talked about it time and again, Al. As this uh, young team has made mistakes in this series, and it has cost them. Three errors last night. They have one tonight, but a few mental errors, and you can see the long job by Joe Girardi. It's going to be a long season. High fastball to Edmonds. Coaching staff is going to be they're going to earn every penny. They just can't allow teams like the Cardinals this many chances. They'll bury it. 1 0 pitch. And it's taken for a strike by Jimmy. One ball, one strike with two down. Now, the modern player today, watch how they play everything off to the side. Two reasons. One, if it takes a bad hop or you miss it, you're not charged with an error, it's charged a base hit, and you don't get hit. That's the old fashioned way you squirt up to it, hit you in the chest, it fell right to the to the ground, you picked him up and threw the guy out. But today so many of the fielders played balls off to the side. Talking with the Marlins folks, they say that he broke back on too many balls a year ago. That his first step it was an instinctive out there in the outfield that he broke back on everything and a lot of balls would drop in front of him and his natural position is the infield. He was originally selected as a shortstop. Of course, Mike Lowell is as sure handed as they come. The former Marlin third baseman. He's now at Boston. And at last check, he was actually hitting the ball because he was yeah. not hitting with the Marlins a year ago. But that was a couple weeks ago. I took a look. Well, he'd be he'd be hitting and playing for Joe Girardi right now if, if uh, you know he was a terrific fielder and hitter and then last year he just got off to a terrible slump batting. That's ball four to Edmonds twice. German has walked Edmonds. He was the first man that he saw last inning. So runners at uh, first and second, and the batter will be Sotoguchi. The Cardinals. Lead this ball game 7 3. They have left 10 runners on. We're talking about that trade and what they've done with this roster for the Marlins. The unloaded Carlos Delgado and Josh Beckett, Mike Lowell. Those three alone saved $77 million over the course of their contracts collectively as Taguchi fouls it back. They also traded away Paul LaDuca, Luis Castillo, Juan Pierre. They brought in 10 pitchers and three position players with all those deals. I'm looking at their 40 man roster. They have 24 pitchers. And I mean, they've got two or three deals that they've made, like German and Borshaw, that they've picked up since the season started. They feel by retooling the way that they wanted to do, Al, is that they said, Larry Beinfest was saying that if a player was available, the best player they could get, they would take a position player. If not, just load up on pitching prospects. You never have enough pitching, nope. and if you have a surplus, you can always acquire anything you want to, anything you need. Two and two, the count on Sotoguchi. Made the start in left field. Scored a run and a single tonight. The 2-2 stays alive. Jack McKeon. He likes his ice cream. Two.
Two and two the count. Gucci drills it into the Cardinal bullpen down the left field line. You get the idea that Jack McKeon right now enjoy retirement. It's never been better after watching <laughs> last night and tonight. <laughs> Jack McKeon at the helm there. Came in, turn, turn around. Uh, Jeff Torborg's team. Here's a 2-2. And Taguchi follows it back. Multiple winners of the uh, World Series since 1979. The Yankees had that great run in 96, 98, 99, 2000. The Twins led by Kirby in 87 and 91. Toronto Blue Jays in 92, 93. And the Marlins, 97 and 03. That's but, been it. And those are the only two years they've had a winning uh, record. It's amazing. Minnesota's gone, you know, one of those years they went from last to first. But Toronto had Paul Molitor and great pitching. Joe Carter. Joe Carter with the game winning home run. Oh, the wild thing. There's Looper who will come in here in the eighth, and I know they have to get Izzy into this game. It's been a week since his last pitch. Here's a 3-2 pitch. And Taguchi pops it up into shallow left center field. Center fielder calling for it. That's Amber Crombie and the Cardinals have stranded 12 tonight. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Game summary is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Dontra Willis on the hill tonight for the Marlins and he did not fare well. Four and two thirds, six runs allowed and 12 hits. Jim Edmonds has had a big night. On base four times. Scott Rowan also a big night with three base hits. Couple runs scored. Big blow in this game. Juan Encarnacion with an RBI triple. Yadier Molina has been on base twice with an RBI and a run scored. Cardinals had a big, big fifth inning. It picked up five runs, and they lead this ball game over the Florida Marlins. Former Marlins closer, Braden Looper. This will be his 12th appearance, a record of 2-0, and an ERA of 1.46. Got off to a little bit of a rough start, but he seems to have settled in. I mean, really, his rough start was really more in spring training. He's only been scored upon in one of his 11 outings. He's lowered his ERA to 146. Pitched two-thirds of an inning against Cincinnati on Tuesday. That's the last time that we saw him on this road trip. Tired all three in the eighth last Saturday and earned the win when Pujols hit the go-ahead home run in the bottom half of the inning. Signed to a three-year deal. Mid-December, former first-round pick, and that one is absolutely crushed. Out to left, and it's 7-4. Josh Willingham with the home run. Whoa, is that thing just smoked? My goodness. Now you see about that power they talk about. And it's his seventh home run, and now 25 RBIs. They lead the Marlins in both departments, and leads in rookies also. So come out here. Throwing a fastball, it's in the middle of the plate and belt high, and it belt it. And a nice catch. Former Cardinal Andre Scalaraga with the longest home run hitting this ballpark way into the upper deck, even more so than some of the bombs that were hit by. Mark McGuire, 390, 395 feet. I, hard to believe. Well, it's hard to believe that somebody hit one further than one McGuire hit off of uh, Rob Nent. That was Perry Hill, their first base coach and infield instructor, and he's a good one. Helped Ugla and a lot of these guys out.
Seven to four, Cardinals, a ball and two strikes on Orchard. And a strikeout. Good pitch by Looper. First out here in the bottom of the eighth. That brings in Miguel Olivo. Over three on the night. Average of 221. So Matt Trainer is the catcher last night for Florida. The pitch is fouled back. This guy's kind of a little bit. Wonder about him a little bit. Uh, in San Diego, he hit 304 in 37 games. Then he goes to Seattle in 54 games. It's 151. What is it? 300 hitter or sub Mendoza line? Outside by Looper. Of course, Looper had that surgery and the cleanup in the offseason, and he says he feels 100% healthy. Base hit in the left. One swing of the bat, and uh, the Marlins are within one. Low target, ball down and in, and just gives it a rip. Pinch hitter now, Alfredo Amezega, and that's going to get Izzy up. Uh, he hadn't pitched since Saturday, so if they turn a double play here, it would be a save situation, and Izzy would come in. He has been thrown, keep sharp. This guy's become a pretty good little pinch hitter. He was four for ten as a pinch hitter in his last ten of pinch hitting appearances, and he had got one last night. First pitch to him. A day late on that swing for strike one. Cardinals lead it 7-4. Redbirds picked up one in the second, one in the fourth, five in the fifth. 14 hits tonight. They've out hit the Marlins 14 9. They lead it 7 4. Lead over there at first by Olivo. Back to Looper off his glove. He's going to take it. Fires the first. Got him. Oh my goodness. Did the Cardinals catch a break there, I believe? <laughs> they got a break earlier in this game on a ball that Luna dropped at second base in a force play should have been ruled safe well, let's see if we're right here on this replay if he is safe on this play uh, knocks it down there hit him on the back and then he takes the ball away from Roland and I think you're correct that Cardinals catch a break bang bang play but it sure looks like the 85 World Series doesn't it sure does don't remind me but it, it went reversed. Right. <laughs> it was reversed, the call. Well, Order was jumping in the air, and Todd Worrell had his foot on the bag with a ball in his glove. Reggie Abercrombie with two outs, runner at second base. Cardinals catch a break. Abercrombie tonight, a double, a run scored, one for three. Raw talent. Anybody stand there with a bat can be dangerous. It's claimed off of waivers from the Diamondbacks. Split time between A ball and double A a year ago. Originally selected by the Dodgers, then sent to Arizona as part of the Sean Green deal. The 2-0 pitch. Cardinals will enjoy a nice long homestand coming up. Even though this has been a week long, it seems like two weeks with the way we've had to travel on this road trip with just the uh, brief two-game series. One of those a real late night as we got into South Florida about 4 o'clock in the morning. 
That was a week ago yesterday morning. Cardinals have three with Colorado, then an off day on Thursday. They'll play three against Arizona, then another off day on Monday, and three with the Mets. And we're off to Kansas City, San Francisco, and San Diego. We wrap up the month of May with three against Houston, their first visit to the new Bush. That's when all those seats will be, uh, have customers in them. Runners at first and second. Tying run comes to the plate. Helms. Pinch it. And got to hit a double back in the seventh inning. And now he is, represents a potential tying run, and we're going to have a double switch. As Aaron Miles is going to go in to play second base. It's going to be it for Looper, and Helms did have a home run his first this past week on Wednesday. So here comes the closer, Isringhausen, in the 7 4 game. Tomorrow night, the world's best players will once again gather to finally answer the question who is the greatest poker player in the world? Find out on the Poker Superstars 3 tomorrow at 8 on FSN Midwest. So Looper couldn't get out of the 8th, and the Cardinals call Jason Isringhausen out of the bullpen. So try to get the final out here in the eighth and then move ahead to the ninth. Isringhausen picked up his seventh save of the season last Saturday. Remember that game? He walked the bases loaded, then eventually got out of it as Nick Johnson was swinging on the first pitch. Couldn't believe that. Tapped it back to Izzy. He almost threw it away. To almost Pools. threw it away. Almost short hopped Albert, who been expecting a nice little chest high throw, and he threw it at his ankles. Joe Girardi out talking with. Jeff Nelson. I wonder what he's questioning there. Isringhausen second on the Cardinals all-time saves list, 147. And Lee Smith number one at 160. Look for four with a couple strikeouts against Jason. Hasn't pitched in a week. Now you can, he says fine is throwing the bullpen, but I never could get comfortable doing that. Runners at first and second. Isringhausen steps off. You know, and normally, historically in his career, he has been a guy that has not had a lack of control. Right. I mean, he's had pretty good control in his career. The cutter misses outside. And he's the kind of guy, too, that when he has a layoff like that, you know, he had no trouble throwing strikes in the past, so it is very atypical for him to have these control problems this year. Now, would you anticipate him being a little bit overstrong here tonight with all the time that he's had off between uh, appearances? He should. And what does that do to a, a cutter or anything else? I mean, can it affect it that much? Well, it can, but, you know, it, you know, Izzy's been a starter. He's, he's now he's you know he's not uh, he's made adjustments even since he's turned to the world of relief pitching and he's not uh, you know the classic 95 mile an hour pitcher when he first came over. He's more of an off speed pitcher, so he should be able to maintain control. Of the 2-0 pitch to Helms, way outside. That's ball three. And Isringhausen hasn't been close. Hanley Ramirez, top of the order, is due up next. The Cardinals will have to go through Miguel Cabrera at least one more time. Here's a 3-0. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. All Izzy needs is one pitch to get out of this inning. The Girardi now is... Gone from counselor to manager. Hanley Ramirez, an RBI double, a run scored. He's fly to center. He's also singled and grounded out to short. 
The pitch runner at first for Wes Helms, that's Reed. He represents the tying run. The go-ahead run is at the plate. It's 7-4 Cardinals with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. It was four straight pitches to Wes Helms and a walk by Jason Isringhausen. One time it was 7-0 after the Cardinals batted it in the fifth. And 7-3, 7-4 now, but what is Ramirez going to do? Should take a strike as Isringhausen can't find the plate. You wonder about the appearance on Saturday and how much he's been thinking about those three walks and his lack of command. Oh, I don't. He doesn't think about that. He doesn't worry about that. Here's a 1 0. There it is. Strike one. One ball, one strike. Talk about it all the time, but, you know, to be a short reliever, you've got to have a short memory. Ramirez is hitting 301 on the year. The 1 1 pitch from Izzy. Foul back. No matter what happens in a game, before you leave the ballpark, you have filled your mind with positive thoughts. Because if you dwell on something negative, it's gonna it's gonna be right back at you the next day. The same thing as your when you save a game, you got to forget about it real quick, too, because you got to start concentrating on your next opponent. Here's a 1-2 from Isringhausen. Tricky hop off the glove of Roland and into left. Two runs are going to score, and it's now a 7-6 ball game. A base hit can tie it up. Took a bad hop over there at third base. Well, you know, we talked about Scott Rowland plays a lot of balls to the side, too. He was guarding the line, so it's several steps to his left, but I'm sure Scotty would tell you more times than not, he makes this play with ease, but it takes that hop, it comes up over the glove, and we've got ourselves a ball game. That closes the book on Looper. Now it's Ugla, base hit. Could tie it up. Remember, they pinch ran for Helms, so that's Reed with good speed out there at second base. And this has happened how many times when it's Mulder's start? Oh, and, oh boy. And in line with the victory, 7 6. All you're trying to do is get the final out of the eighth inning. With all the things that the Marlins have done wrong, they're right back in it with one swing. First pitch is a strike. Douglas fly to center, fly to right, single to right, and grounded out to short. Here's an 0 1. He's said about his team, they play hard. They'll make some mistakes, they'll do some things, but they don't quit. Curveball that time, and it's fouled back one and two. It was Ramirez that hit the curveball past Scott Rowland and into left. Right handers getting loose for the Marlins in their bullpen. Cardinals will have the bottom of the order coming up. Isringhausen a strike away from sending us to the ninth. And just like pitchers don't want to try to look ahead to Albert Pools on deck it's Miguel Cabrera. Reed with very good speed out there at second base. And Cabrera is 0 for 4 with a strikeout against Izzy. Here's a 1 2. 
He got him. Huge strikeout for the Cardinals and Jason Isringhausen. He sends us to the ninth, and the Cardinals are clinging to a one-run lead. It's 7-6. Cardinals with a lead of 7-6, top of the ninth here in Florida. They're trying to hold on for Mark Mulder. St. Louis with 14 hits tonight. Matt Hurgis is the new pitcher for the Marlins. And he will face Yadier Molina to start the ninth. Looking ahead now to the bottom half of this inning, Cabrera, Willingham, who homered off a looper, and Borcher coming up. Amazing guy stays in the ball game. He's playing first. One ball, one strike on Molina. Intentional pass all the way back in the second inning. He's lined out to short, doubled to right field, and grounded out to third. Hit the ball hard, though, here tonight. The 1-1 pitch to the Cardinal catcher. Heard just had a perfect... One, two, three, ninth inning last night. Trying to do the same to get his team on offense. The Cardinals are trying to get some insurance runs. St. Louis has left 12 on tonight. Two balls and one strike. Dantrell Willis made the start for the Marlins. He only lasted four and two thirds. Six runs on 12 hits against the D train. Here's a 3-1. Back to the pitcher. Molina retired. Burgess, a non-roster player, invitee to Major League Camp, added to the 40-man roster on March 29th. Part of a double switch is Aaron Miles. First time that he has come to the dish tonight, hitting 297 with five RBIs. Opening day starter at second base for the Cardinals. The fourth different one in the last four seasons for the Cardinals. Sabina, Womack, Rizalonic, and now Aaron Miles. Here's an 0-1 pitch. Miles grew up in California, an Oakland A's fan. Now playing for Tony La Russa. Said the first thing he thought about when he came to St. Louis was the fact that, you know what, I've got a chance to win. Back at Hurgis again, two away. And it's up to David Eckstein with two outs here in the top of the ninth, and the Cardinals up by a run. Eckstein on base three times tonight. Came in with an on-base percentage of 375. Two singles and a walk. He's flied to right and popped out to, sh uh, to third. Isringhausen threw 13 pitches in the uh, eighth inning. Seven strikes, six balls. Eckstein shoots this one out to deep left field. Just in front of the track. And the catch is made by Willingham. Coming up, the heart of the order for the Marlins in the bottom of the ninth. Cabrera leads it off against Izzy when we come back. Well, coming up after the final out of this one, we've got the Bushlight Midwest Sports Report, Cardinals post-game coverage, and today's sports news and notes all coming up on the Bushlight Midwest Sports Report. Final warm-up tosses for the Cardinal closer, Jason Isringhausen, 7-6 St. Louis. And Miguel Cabrera will lead it off for the Marlins. One swing of the bat, and he could tie this baby up. Only four home runs on the year. Thirty-three last year, thirty-three the year before home runs. First pitch by Izzy. 
way outside for ball one. Isringhausen came in. He walked Wes Helms. Gave up the RBI single to Ramirez and then struck out Ugla to end the bottom of the eighth. Nasty pitch that time. That's strike one. His curveball has been sharp from the get-go. Just don't hang it. And Marlins, you know, they share the Jupiter complex with the Cardinals. They, they know how good the Cardinals are, but... Here's a 1-1. Popped up right side. Is there a play for Pujols? Foul territory, and he's running out of real estate. That's strike two. Well, Izzy, at least in the eighth inning, got his adrenaline flowing and got, uh, he knows he's in for a battle right now. There's a walk in the base hit. He has to go through the heart of the order. One and two the count. The next by Izzy. Curveball up the middle past Miles and into center field. The tying run is on. swing of the bat and this game is over. Josh Willingham is homer tonight. That was off of Braden Loop for last inning. And he crushed the ball. He's hit into a double play. He has walked. He has grounded out and homered. This crowd is very uh, small crowd is into it. I remember that Molina can throw with the best of them but you steal off the pitcher. Willingham on the first pitch, out to center, late break by Edmonds, calling off Miles, he'll make the catch. He's asking Tony LaRusso about it the other day. He said one of the things that they've really worked with Jason Isringhausen is his times to the plate. And while he was one of the more, I guess, slower pitchers to the plate that the Cardinals had, he's not anymore. Well, there was an example of what you're talking about because it was uh, you know, his form of slide step. But most closers, because they're maximum effort, long windups, put a lot into it, and slow to the plate. Borcher now the hitter. Double play can end it. In time is called by the batter. And there's how Tony also is helping to control the running game, giving that signal telling Izzy just to hold the ball. Because all base runners want to be in action. They don't like to stop and just sit there. It takes a life and spring out of their legs. Ground ball to Albert. On to second for one. Can they turn two? Double play and the game ends. Cardinals win it seven to six. Isringhausen to save. Mulder, career win number 100. And the Cardinals have taken the first two of this three-game set against the Marlins. Needed almost all those 14 hits, but it was worth it in the long run. Here's our play of the game. It's brought to you by Budweiser. It's Mark Mulder with uh, career victory number 100. So Mulder picks up the win. The Cardinals finish this one off, a final of 7-6. to six. They're now 19-12 and 12 on the year. Mulder is 3-1. 7-6, our final. Back with more in a moment. <laughs> 